Okay, so for today we have some drama. <laughs> okay, this is this is actually not a drama. This is actually a well written uh, solution, so to speak, for how the game is currently at right now. So this is done by Apotheosis Inc., who is also one of my channel members. Thanks, bro. Really appreciate it as well. Anyway, he has shared some of his thoughts on the changes of 3.1.7, and he did it in a pretty nice way as well. So I feel like it is only helpful if we are able to consolidate our thoughts and to push it forward with a clear head and a meaningful approach, as opposed to just screaming at the developers which is something that I tend to do okay so sometimes when I get really pissed off I just lose it as well and it's something that I need to work on for myself but something like what he's doing right here is probably going to be quite helpful so he is Apotheosis Inc. He keeps a pretty low profile but some of you guys might know him from the Infinite Miracle, some low view YouTube videos on Endgame Speed Teams or his role leading RK, ARK and now co-leader of Eden. So he's just sharing his thoughts about 3.1.7 and yeah there is a link here to submit your opinions as well. But we're gonna start off with the Ritual Miracles here. So he's saying that the Ritual Miracles are way too difficult. I fully agree. So even though it is accessible to Endgame players, myself included right? It is not accessible to the bulk of the players. So there needs to be an accessible path to the end game. Mid game players cannot progress to the late game unless they can reliably farm relics to get there. And the difficulty level together with limited stamina refills and access to free stamina and a very poor goal economy is creating a bottleneck for players. Agreed. Preventing them from being able to progress. So here's the problem with Ritual Miracles and I've mentioned this in a previous angry video as well. So I feel like for Ritual Miracles, the whole point of it is just to farm relics and it is where most players will be spending their, the bulk of their time at and there is very little reason why you need to make it so difficult. Like in my opinion, this is where content should be the easiest or like the most manageable or like you can use many different kinds of lineups to make the run work. But instead what they decided to do is to make it kind of like a challenge and to make it super freaking difficult for some reason so that it's less accessible. Just to widen the gap between like the free to play players and the pay to win players, it's something that I do not really agree with because there is a stamina system where the pay to win players are definitely going to excel at more because for me I can buy like the value stamp packs, I can do 10 refills every single day, it is nothing to me at all. But for a free to play player they are going to have an increasingly larger gap because they cannot have access to all of these advantages for example. So please reduce the difficulty of Ritual Miracles. It does not need to be so difficult. And in fact, there was nothing wrong with Ritual Miracles. No one was complaining about it, except for APEP. So APEP should have been reduced in difficulty. It should not have been increased at all. So just revert all the changes on Ritual Miracles and we are okay. I think the issue started when people started discovering Xiao In as a fast farmer for Fafnir and then they suddenly started tweaking things like crazy just to punish players for using their creativity for some reason. I feel like that is so scummy. But here's what he goes on to say, right? So take the current 6 star relic drop rate and add it to level 15, but make 15's difficulty easy enough to farm by players that want to move from mid game to the late game. Agree. And then increase the rewards for farming on the current level 16. Uh, this could be more relics, a higher chance to get more flaws relics and blah 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 blah. Uh, this is a hit or miss in my opinion because there are some players who are going to say like oh that then widens the gap of the pay to win players or like the whales versus the free to play players because for example if I'm able to farm the new challenge difficulty then some other players are going to feel left out right. So this is a little bit touchy feely in my opinion. But then again it is also true that you know some of the some of the weaker players they can build slower teams to run the same content with a little bit more time which I think makes a little bit of sense as well but you know gauging by how Lilith Games have designed the current Kronos, Apex and Fafnir I don't think they actually understand what it means to have a diversified set of Espers. It is somehow just going to fall back into a cookie cutter team again. I mean just think about it, Kronos and Apex, how has that changed in the past? It has not changed at all. It is still done by DPS lineups and yes you did add like maybe the need for disease and all that but you are still using the same strategy just defense break and a lot of DPS and that's it same thing. Next gold stamina and experiment so the devs mentioned poor gold economy in the recent notice adding more gold to ritual miracle will help and players would appreciate having a gold economy where they could gamble with relics to improve themselves. Okay so this is the thing right I feel like in the past where practice stages was kind of like the best place to farm gold Although I will still say that Relic Farming is the best place to farm gold, I feel like it's better if they stuck to the same format and just put the gold or at least the bulk of the gold back into Sonic Rifts so that you're farming for both gold and EXP at the same time. But they have already mentioned that they're going to add more gold into Ritual Miracle so I guess that will still help. Now you can make farming more accessible by increasing the free stamina, reducing refill costs and removing the refill cap. I feel like this is a little bit dangerous because then all, all the wheels will just go crazy. So I think right now if people are not complaining about certain things, it's not a necessarily a good idea to adjust it. If not, it might actually lead to a new set of problems. 
But I think this is fine, right? Like increasing the free stamina and reducing the refill cost. I think this makes a lot of sense to make it a bit more accessible to like free to play players. It's easier for them to do a 10 refill and to be on par with some of the whales as well. Altogether, if you make a clear progression path, fix the goal economy to enable progression and allow them to farm endlessly, all players would be able to progress. Players that are motivated to progress will be happy with these changes. Basically, like your try hard free to play players, right? And then now moving on to resonance changes. So resonance changes are strong, but players will be frustrated if they feel like they are inaccessible. True. Now the consolidation of goal records makes sense to the developers, but players feel like they lost something even if they are getting more goal records now. This could be addressed by increasing the gacha rates. This is also a very, very, very sensitive topic. I'm not sure whether, or rather should I say, of course players will be happy about this, right? Let's say if you increase the gacha rates to like 100%, people will be super happy about it, but is it necessarily going to be good for the balance of the game? I'm not sure. I feel like the gacha rates are currently okay because the amount of summons that we get is, is quite high right now, to be honest. Now you have increased rates using PT systems alone thus far, just increase the base rate a little bit to improve players' experience using the records that they have or earn. Actually, you know what, you guys let me know down in the comments below how you feel about this. Do you think that Echo right now could do with an increase to the base summon chance of legendaries? Let me know. Because this is not something that I hear very often nowadays. And make the Resonance Mystery Trader a regular event or bring back Ripple Op Boxes. Yes, this is what I've been saying, right? Just bring back the Ripple Op Box and transform the Wish Pool into an actual wishing system. So instead of 5 Espers that you already own, why not 5 of any kind of Espers? Because hear me out, this is not going to ruin the game at all. Number 1, you need a few resonance copies of some of the key Espers in order to make them useful. And number 2, on average, in order for you to selectively choose one of these 5 Espers, you will need to have on average 500 Wish Stones. And in order for you to obtain 500 Wish Stones, that would have required you to invest over 1200 summons just to get 500 Wish Stones. So if you think about it that way, I don't feel like this version of the wish pool is going to break the game at all. Now because players would most likely wish for espers that they do not have, in order for you to compensate with the fact that you need to rezzo some of your existing espers, that is where the ripple out box comes in. And that is how players can play the game with an actual sense of progression. With an actual sense of, hey, I am improving because I am choosing how I want to grow. So this is kind of like my opinion about this anyway. Now if people have some way to assess resonance in a time basis, they'll be much happier with the resonance changes because they have again a very clear progression path. Yes, I agree, they need to have a goal, they need to have a clear progression path. They need to know that, okay, in the next event, I am going to be able to resonate one of my legendary experts, for example, right? They can choose who exactly they want to resonate. I think that might make players a little bit happier to stay on, so I think it's something that developers can definitely consider. Next is the dead endgame. So endgame needs rewards and competitive gameplay. Whales and progress players are floundering nothing to do with all their growth. Now, I personally have way too much to do because I have to make a lot of content, so I'm actually quite far behind on some of my endgame content, like Infinity Tower for example. I have barely ever touched it just because of how much time it requires and just how I don't really benefit all that much from it because number one, most of you guys don't even care about it anyway, and number two, the rewards are not exactly that good for the effort that I need to put in. But anyway, that's just me. Also, add rewards to top-end gameplay to encourage growth and add competitive gameplay to keep players engaged and playing beyond farming daily. So he goes on to explain what he means. So for example, holo battles, increase the rewards for top holo battle clubs, improve holo battle matchmaking. Yeah, this one has been... We have been talking about this forever, right? Improve the holo battle matchmaking. I do not know why <laughs> I'm still facing like low-end clubs. So it has been months and months and months and they have not actually fixed this yet. And now for point war, add seasons, a bi-weekly reset of rating above 0.116 to allow players to compete for 17 and 18 regularly. I agree with this sentiment, because take a look at this, right? So currently, I am sitting uh, sitting pretty at 37, about 38,000 points, which means that it's almost impossible for a player to reach my current standing, right? Because if you think about it, in order for a player to hit tier 16, they need to have 6,400 points, which is like 20% of the score that I'm currently at, right? So if the game does not have a full reset back to 0.116, this does not actually make progression available to players who are stuck at 0.116 just because of how far the gap is right now. I do feel like this makes a bit of sense. But of course a lot of the endgame players are going to hate me for that because they have worked so hard to obtain such a high score for example. I understand as well but I'm trying to think from a majority perspective and to enhance fair play and general competitiveness. Now finally, warm-up matches create a shorter season for warm-up matches on a regular basis. This could fix queue times for the population dwindles and satisfy players that like RTA. I, I agree with this, okay? So I personally don't like RTA because I don't have a lot of the experts that 
make RTA easy. So it's not a fun content for me because honestly in content like this, if you lose, it kind of sucks a lot. But if you win, it feels really good. So if you have those key experts, this is going to be content that satisfies you. But if you're a player like me who lacks a lot of Shimmer Legendaries, for example, right? It's going to be a lot harder for me to compete or to at least feel good about myself after playing this content. Keep a list of the previous season's leaderboards to motivate players to rank. It's very diminishing to push for a top rank and nobody know what you achieve after the season. Okay, so this is a little bit of a gratification thing. I guess it's also very important for your whales to be happy. So this is probably going to make your whales happy as well. But anyway, let's take a look at some of the comments here and let's see whether people agree or disagree. So didn't see something more accurate than this from far. Hope they will listen to players. Actually, nothing more to add to the comprehensive discussion you and Ghost put together here. Have an upvote, blah, blah, blah. Uh, there is something that he forgot to mention, which is how quickly they were to fix the Dona Ripple cost and how quickly they were to fix the difficulty of Kronos from like being affected by poisons to now suddenly not being affected by poisons anymore. They are so quick to take away from you, but they are not quick enough to provide for you. I did my part and copy pasted your post. I couldn't word it any better. So people generally tend to agree with this. Great post, nice to see someone at the end game not defending their recent changes and instead offering realistic solutions. Now I guess this person is the aforementioned ghost. The removal of GR from shops was a miss. That's something that has been in the game since launch and should not have been removed. I agree. This should not have been removed at all. It doesn't really matter if they are trying to increase the gold records via events or all that sort, right? You should not remove things unless it is a necessity, unless it's really breaking the game. Do not touch the shops. That's the bare minimum because there are some people who are going to think that, oh, they are taking away stuff from us, therefore it is bad. They're not going to see the full picture and it really doesn't make sense. Why don't you just keep the gold records in the shop and reduce the gold records that you get from events? It's as simple as that just to make people think that, oh, in general, we are improving as we progress. I don't know if the removal of SSM means that people will be getting legendary espers more often. That's the point, especially the no selector or true wish list for espers you don't own. Getting legendaries through GR from shops seems more of the same to me. Bring them back. Okay, there is a lot, <laughs> there's a lot of angry stuff here. Uh, I'm probably not going to read everything. You try to talk to developers like you're talking with a child, understandable. You know what, this is actually an effective tactic, right? Because he's being nice about the way he's pushing forward his information so that this post was not downvoted or it was not deleted by the mods or anything like that, right? Okay, but anyway, there are a lot more comments, you guys. Feel free to use the link that I'm going to put down in the descriptions below just to assess this article, sort of article. Anyway, let me know your thoughts about this post down in the comment section below. I'm very curious to know what you guys think about the things that was mentioned here. I'm going to assume that most of you guys are going to agree with the bulk of it. But anyway, that's it for today's video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to thumbs up. It really helps the channel and subscribe for more dislike content. Now with that said, this has been Dairy Free to Play. And as always, I will see you in the next video.